renewable energy sources have received greater attention during the past few decades and considerable efforts have been made to develop efficient renewable energy conversion system the major goals of these approaches are to have reduced environmental damage conservation of energy exhaustible sources and increased safety the renewable energy systems can be used to supply power either directly to the utility grid or to an isolated load the stand alone system find wider applications in isolated areas which are far away from utility grid Here, utility grid can get the power from nearest power station, but isolated areas can't do like that. So that's why our project area is isolated loads. Okay, isolated loads is nothing but which is separated from the grid. Okay, so we need to give total demand based on renewable energy source only. Okay, but here in grid, it can't depend only on renewable energy source. They can also get the power from the nearest power station. Okay. But here in isolated loads, that is not possible. Okay, it is totally depending on the renewable energy source only. So now it's clear. Our topic is completely depending on isolated loads. I already told you we need to give total demand. Total demand required for isolated loads through renewable energy source only. Okay, that is the main concept here. Okay, and overall all renewable energy sources. I am taking the solar PV as our main source. Why I am taking solar PV only? Because it requires less space, easily installable anywhere, and you can see lot of daily day applications are based in solar only, like solar street lights, solar rooftop homes, solar vehicles like that. But you can't see any wind homes, tidal vehicles like that. Okay, because it is not possible. that is the power of pv that's why i prefer solar here but the problem with this solar is if you take the solar system it is totally depending on the irradiation and temperature for example if you take the throughout the day from morning to evening morning and evening it will get the lesser power from the solar and afternoon you can get the maximum power okay and night time it completely zero right night time so here we can't give the total demand required to isolated load through only depending on the solar because it is not constant it is variable depending on the temperature and irradiation okay so that's why we need to go for the other source it is called as hybrid renewable energy system so over all remaining renewable energy sources i prefer here wind so why wind here the integration of different energy sources and energy storage systems have been one of the new trends in renewable energy technology or all of them the best hybrid combination of all renewable energy sources stand alone wind and solar is the best hybrid combination of renewable energy systems and suitable for most of the applications so here why i am taking wind here because if you seen the combination of pv and wind it can take care of the seasonal changes they also complement each other during the lean periods for example if you take the monsoon months additional energy produced in the wind and less energy produced in pv okay similarly in the post winter months wind is dull and solar will generate more power this work proposes a solar and wind generation based on hybrid renewable energy system so now we can directly say these two are the best combinations okay but how we can connect these two so here the main problem with the combination of pv and wind is in wind you get the ac and solar you will get the dc and also these two are depending on some input okay if you take the solar it is depending on irradiation and temperature if you take wind it will depending on wind speed so that's why the output of this renewable energy sources are variable so to connect these two first of all we need to get the constant supply from the input that's why we are using the dc to dc converter so after getting the pv we are connecting this to one dc to dc converter to extract the constant power okay same as that in wind system we are getting the ac right first we need to convert this ac into dc by using the rectifier okay by using rectifier we are connecting ac to dc then we need to use dc to dc converter to get the exact power it is clear we are getting the both dc's here but our load is ac right so 
to connect this dc to ac we need to connect the inverter okay inverter so i am using the multi level inverter here okay multi level inverter not a normal inverter here i am connecting the multi level inverter why multi level inverter if you see the output of normal inverter you will get the only like this but if you see in the multi level inverter you can get the voltage in the form of levels so here when compared to normal inverter multi level inverter have the low harmonic distortion okay and also higher efficiency that's why i am preferring multi level inverter if you don't know about the multi level inverter clearly i already made a video on that from basic level to advanced level so you can see that video okay so here our main theme is to take the multi level inverter because they have lower distortion and higher efficiency so that is the overall diagram we are having now we can connect this multi level inverter to ac okay this is our overall circuit diagram and here i am also taking one battery backup to our system okay so here i am taking the one battery backup to our model why because i am taking this battery storage to store the energy when generation exceeds demand whenever the source is exceeds the demand so battery can store that energy okay and whenever the load required that demand so it can give back to the load and the supply from the battery is needed during the peak hours when power demand is higher than the production that's why to balance the load and source this battery plays a key role that's why i'm taking the battery itself so this is the our main blocks here now if you study separately first of all go for the solar panel so the input of the solar panel is depending on irradiation and temperature so output we need to give to the dc to dc converter if you take the morning to evening the power is variable okay to extract the maximum power we need to use the mppt techniques okay mppt is nothing but the maximum power pen tracking techniques so here i am using incremental conductance okay we have remaining also pattern pattern observer and hill climbing system but here we prefer the incremental conductance it is only depending on the output of solar current and voltage so it can track these two and give pulse signal to the dc dc boost converter okay so whenever it requests the power it can boost up the voltage and give supply to output okay that is the main process here to extract the maximum power we need to use the maximum power pen tracking technique with the boost converter so this mppt and our dc dc boost converter will operate combinedly now open your matlab this is our provided circuit so here you can able to see the wind and here you can able to see the solar okay this is the pv and this is the wind above and below i am connecting the one battery here okay to balance the load and source so first of all go to pv and here i am taking the one solar pv array with the radiation and temperature so after that i already told you we need to give to the boost converter so this inductor and this igbt and this diode make a boost converter so i already told you with the help of mppt and boost converter we are getting the maximum power that's why here i am taking the maximum power pen control so in mppt what we are taking we are taking the incremental conductance that's why i given name here incremental conductance okay so this can take the voltage and current of the pv and give the pulses to our boost converter and after that it will go to the one storage capacitor and here we are taking the voltage and current measurements to measure the current and voltage okay so these are the pv values voltage of the pv current of the pv irradiation and temperature these are the measurements blocks of our solar system okay now go back and below we are connecting the battery here to see the battery waveforms here i am connecting one scope okay here we can able to see the state of charge of the battery whether it is charged or discharged okay so above we need to go for the wind in this wind system block here first of all we need to check the wind turbine so this is the wind turbine what is the input to the wind turbine wind speed right so here i am taking the wind speed and pitch angle as the input so after wind turbine we need to give it to the generator to generate the power so that's why i am taking the this asynchronous machine nothing but the generator generator can generate the power in three phase form so here we are getting the three phase ac here so to convert the ac to dc i am taking the one bridge direct fail so this is the bridge direct fail it can convert ac to dc that's why you can able to see here input blocks are a b c and output blocks are plus and minus so in between these two you will get the dc okay so we need to give this dc to one dc to dc converter so this is the one dc to dc converter because this input value is variable not constant to get the constant supply we need to take the one dc to dc converter so same like solar here also we am taking the current and voltage measurements to measure the wind current and wind voltage okay so go back so here it is clear we are getting the two inputs two separate sources so these two separate sources will given to the multi level inverter okay these two hb generators will make a multi level inverter okay so this two are connected to the output this is the r load we are taking you can take any load so with the help of lc filter we are taking the 
node why lc filter means if you take the inverter also we are getting the output like this right for multi level inverter so this is not pure ac right but for load we need a pure ac like this to convert this into this we need to take the lc passive filter that's why here in our matlab i am taking the simple lc filter to get the pure ac so to measure the output voltage and current i am taking the current and voltage measurements both okay and here to give the switching path test our inverter i am using the passive modulation sine solar passive modulation that's why i am taking the sine wave here and one carrier wave here and giving to the relation operator to give the pulse test or switches just double click on the switch it will go to our switch okay so like that we can turn on and we can turn off the switches and below we can able to see the waveforms of our circuit run your matlab simulation and click on scopes here you can able to see the waveforms so in the scope 2 you can able to see voltage of the wind and current of the wind and third one is the product means power of the wind so you can able to see the both waveforms okay so first one is the voltage and second one is the current and third one is the power so you can able to see it will steadily give the output okay so same like that open other scope this is for voltage of the solar and current of the solar and power of the solar you can able to see the same so it will give the constant power similarly open the other scope this is for output voltage and output current and output power so here you can able to see these two graphs will give the dc output but here in the load we want ac right so here we need to get the ac output here so double click on this scope then you can able to get the ac output okay so here also in the voltage you will get the ac output okay now open the below scope so here we can able to get the voltage current and the power that's it if you want this project contact me i will give complete assistance and also i will explain and each and every block clearly through google meet okay